talk about fuel economy entertains me a lot when I hear people saying that they buy a new car because it consumes less fuel. Yes, it's true it consumes one liter less, but let's do the calculation of how much is saved on fuel and how much is lost on depreciation. I count that if you buy a new mid-size car that uses 20% less fuel, it takes 60 years to pay off on fuel economy compared to a 10-year-old car. So the question is, to buy a 10-year-old car or to buy a new car that uses 20% less fuel? You can buy a new one, but the fuel is not the argument, because it would take 60 years to feel that economy. Yes, the intellect rationalizes that fuel saving is the main criteria, but basically, we buy it because of status or because we simply can afford it. We consider expenses for fuel, service, parts, and insurance, but rarely how much we lose because of depreciation. But depreciation happens not because the car's technical condition becomes ten times worse and its price dropped tenfold. The price dropped because of design depreciation. The outer look is not fresh anymore. It doesn't make an impression for others. That is why the price falls. Would you invest in stocks or real estate if its future worth curve looks like this? Yes, we can think of many arguments that a new car is safer, but I think that safety is measured by the speed you drive and not the car's price. If you want to live a rich life, you must not fail while making big purchases. Would you invest in a stock fund when its future graphic shows an obvious and steady downward trend? Most probably not. This is the part where we have enough smarts. But when we spend money on a new car, we can tell anything just to avoid the thought that no matter how good this car is, it will lose at least 15% of its worth in the following year. We do not invest in a stock fund whose price is dropping 15% every year, but we do invest in such a car. And these decisions are made in one and the same head. What confusion! As I told you earlier, we apply very different rules for money and buying stuff. If we buy stock shares, we expect at least a 10% increase and choose very carefully. When we buy a car, we try to ignore the fact that its value drops 10 to 20% a year, and we consider it a good investment. Let's say you bought a new car. You did not buy the function to drive from point A to point B because another car could do this function fine and its price could be ten times less. You bought emotions, status, a dream. However, your dream every month will cost about $500 less. If you don't believe it, look on the Internet for any new car and the same model only one year older. Compare the prices and divide by 12. This is not buying. I call it giving money away. Did the car become worse in a month? No, but every month it is worth less. The only thing that is truly changing in this industry is car design. Because of the design and impression on us, we can separate which car is old and which is new. Their technical characteristics may be equally good, but old ones just do not look as good as a car with a fresh design. Many people think that the car's production year, mileage, and other similar information are the most important features, but production year is highly overrated. If a new model didn't show up for 15 years, a 15-year-old car would look fine and would still be fashionable because there would be no better-looking cars around. Would you worry that your car is old? Not at all. You would be calm and happy. If no new models were created for 15 years, then even a car straight from the manufacturer would make no huge impression because it is similar to all others made in the past 15 years. If there were no impression, then there would be no sales because if a new and 15-year-old car looked the same, then which one would you choose? You would be happy having your 15-year-old car. Several times I had the chance to confirm that 15-year-old cars can compete well with new cars in terms of technical, speed, and other characteristics. 
Even in the 60s, cars had automatic windows and other comfort equipment. Their economy did not change a lot. However, the price of a 15-year-old car and a new one is 20 to 40 times different. Therefore, we pay that 20 to 40 times higher price mostly for the car's design, and even car makers admit that. What else are we paying for? We pay because a group of people sit day and night thinking what else they can offer to their clients and what improvements can be made. This group consists of engineers, designers, and others who work long hours and search for new forms, ideas, and improvements. Maybe we don't need those improvements at all. But what should those people do then? Their productivity and efficiency is rushing with an intention to realize self, and it makes everyone else try to do better. If it was not for this little group of workaholics pushing the quality of life forward, we could happily live in peace and in a comfort zone. Life is pushed forward by those creative, enthusiastic, and productive people, and we want to be just like them. We want to have things that they invented. We don't really want those things, but we want to be just as creative, innovative, and persistent as they are. We think that by having stuff created by those people, we will also become like them.